Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to go over an example earnings report for Apple's Q3 results. We're going to go more in depth of what I'm looking for in an earnings report and also a simplified of how you could potentially look at an earnings report and decipher if it's good or bad. But first, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. So going into this earnings report, what am I going to be looking for? We're going to go on this Everything Money software, and we're going to go into this Q3 report and decipher if anything's changed with our calculation. So these are the calculations that we use for Apple, and we are going to see if we are going to tweak any of these numbers. So starting with price to earnings ratio, this is taking the price divided by earnings. So current price of Apple is sitting at... Uh, 166 we'll call it so going into the earnings report their EPS earnings per share was a dollar 20 now they're nine months so this is taking the last three quarters in with this is four dollars and 86 cents so I'm gonna go and look at analyst estimates for Apple now Apple is consistently beat on earnings consistently if this E is green that means they're beating on earnings so I'm going to put a little bit higher number we're going to go with a 1.4 we're going to add that into their last three quarters and then divide the stock price by that number so looking at the 4.86 over the last three quarters we are going to add in 1.4 and we're looking at roughly six dollars and 25 cents EPS is what we can put into this calculation so the current stock price is 166. We're going to divide that by 6.25. We get an EP or a, a PE ratio of 26 and a half, roughly. So looking at the pass of Apple, um, under their five-year average, which is good to see, but right in line with their current PE. Okay. Now for this PE, I'd want to see revenue growth over 10%. I'd actually want to see cash flow growth and net income growth around that 10% range as well. So moving right along, we're going to look at the return on invested capital. <clears throat> now, I just typed in what is Apple's return on invested capital. I changed my filter to the past month <clears throat> and I found right here that in Q3, Apple posted an ROIC return on invested capital of 16%. Now, a little bit below their five-year average, but ultimately, we're looking for over 9% return on invested capital. So 16%. Apple, quarter in and quarter out, they consistently re, uh, invest their money very well. So 16% is very good, and nothing wrong with that. Even though it is a decrease, they're still investing their money very well. So moving right along, we're going to look at revenue growth. So we're going to go to the financials. We're going to look at total net sales. Now we're going to look at the year-over-year -year growth right here. I can see this isn't at that 10% range that I'd like to be seeing. And as I stated before, I was expecting a little bit lower revenue. Now I can see there is still some growth here, so that is that is good to see. But we're going to see exactly what that growth is. So I'm going to take total net sales divided by last year's net sales. So 82959 divided by 81434. Now I can see their revenue growth year over year is 1.8%. Okay, a uh, little bit lower, but we still have a lot of this earnings report to go through, so nothing to really determine here. But going to the stock analyzer tool, my job is to be conservative. I'm using 5 to 10% revenue growth here, and this is over a 10 year analysis. So a little bit on the lower side, but in high inflationary times, there is higher costs of cost of product cost. Um, that is going to hurt their profit margins. So that is going to be the next thing that we look at. We look, we're going to look at the profit margins and gross margins of the company. Uh, revenue growth, you know, there still is revenue growth. So it is good that they did not decrease in revenue. Re revenue. So there's positives and negatives with that. So going to gross margins, our gross margins here today is 43%. We're going to go see if that has changed at all. So I'm going to take gross margin divided by total net sales. So gross margins, 35,885 divided by total net sales, 82,959. Okay, so right in line with that 43%, nothing's changed right there. Now profit margins, we're going to take net income divided by 
total net sales. So net income is 19,442 right there, divided by 82959. Now you can see their profit margin is 23%. We go back to the software. I can see their year to date profit margin is 26%. So that's 3% lower, 300 basis points lower on profit margins. Looking at my analysis on on the company, that's right in my middle assumptions at that 23%. Okay, that that there's there's nothing that I see right there that would make me want to change these numbers going on into the future, unless there was something that they had said where they're expecting in forward guidance where they're expecting margins to increase, but they do not present any of that, so we're going to keep that the same as of right now. So. Moving right along, the next on our list is net income growth. So I go back to the report, I can see year over year, this is a decrease in revenue. Now, if I wanted to see what this uh, decrease was, you can calculate that, but I'm, I'm very interested in this decrease in revenue because they increased sales, but their net income decreased. Now, this is a little bit alarming and could be taken as a red flag, but we're not going to jump to conclusions here. But going to our current PE, for a PE of 26, I want to see their net income growing, I want to see their revenue growing, and I want to see their free cash flow growing. So something to monitor there for sure. So shares outstanding is our next pillar. So we go to the financials, we're going to shares used in computing earnings per share. This shows their total shares outstanding. Now, last year in June, this was their total shares, and this is their current share. So we're going to take last year's shares divided by our current shares to see what rate they're buying back these shares. So we're going to take 16629371 divided by 16. 16162945. You see they're buying back their shares year over year at a 2.8% rate. Now, looking at Apple's five year, the rate that they're buying back shares on a five year basis is 22%. So 2.8% is drastically lower. And like I said, Apple is very good at investing their money. They know what they're doing. We're actually going to go into the income statement and look at the previous quarters and look at the rate that they've been buying back shares. So let's uh, put this on the last four quarters right here. Now you can see aggressively buying shares, aggressively buying shares. And now even from this year, they that's still a decent rate of buying back shares, but from 16.28 billion to only 16.18 billion. The amount that they're buying that back is decreasing a little bit. So that is definitely something to monitor, but as I mentioned, we want the company, even though the company is buying back shares, are they buying back good shares? Did the company buy those shares down here on this dip? I do not know. But if I think that the company is overpriced up here, we do not want them spending a lot of capital. So even though the shares um, decrease a lot at the rate that they're buying them, if the company is overpriced, I don't want them spending a lot of their free cash flow focusing on buying back shares. So I'm actually going to take the slowed rate of buying shares as a positive. But also keep in mind that you don't want the company sitting on a ton of cash either because of high inflation, the value of the dollar is depreciating year in and year out. So if they're sitting on a bunch of cash, they're not using their money properly and they're actually hurting themselves and not maximizing their potential. So positives and negatives in there, but ultimately they are buying back shares. They're benefiting the shareholders of the company. That is a positive. Now long-term liabilities, now, when looking at an earnings report, sometimes it is going to be very hard to track this because the companies aren't going to post their total long-term liabilities in their financials. They're just going to show current liabilities and total liabilities. Now, out of these total liabilities, how much of this is long-term? I cannot decipher in right here. So this is why I kind of wait for the software to get updated. That way I can go into this balance sheet and see their total long-term liabilities. But here we are, here's their last quarter earnings report that is updated. I can see that their long-term liabilities is $155 billion. So I could go and look at the, the debt that they paid off, but I'm just going to go off this $155 billion, and we're going to jump 
to the cash flow. So we're going to jump to the cash flow and see what the cash flow is for Apple. So all I did, I typed in Apple Q3 free cash flow. Now, I like Y charts for this because it shows every single quarter I can see exact number of cash flow that they that they posted. So I can see on this quarter they posted 20.8 billion in free cash flow. Now calculating the year over year growth they had 19 billion in free cash flow the year before. So pretty solid growth right there actually. Now if I were to calculate that I'd take 20.79 divided by 19. <clears throat> and I can see the growth of their free cash flow year over year was 9.4%. So that is definitely a positive right there. That kind of lines in more of what I'd be looking for for the price to earnings ratio. But then again, you look back at that and you say, okay, the revenue didn't increase like this and the net income didn't increase, increase like this. Where inside of here did they get that increase in free cash flow? You can dive deeper into that, but that is uh, definitely a little bit more time consuming. But all in all, their free cash flow increased by 9.4% year over year. That is a very good increase. So going back to their long-term liabilities, if I'm taking that, their free cash flow is 20.8. We multiply that by 4. We can expect roughly 83.2 in that ballpark range for their year-to-date free cash flow. So then I'm going to multiply that by 5 over the course of 5 years. If they stay consistent with that free cash flow, I can expect $416 billion in free cash flow over the next 5 years. We switch over back to the balance sheet, go down to total long-term liabilities. Does this cover their total long-term liabilities? And it clearly does. Apple's sitting on a very good... Uh, in a very good position in terms of their balance sheet and in their debt ratio. Now I could also go and look at their current uh, ratio, which basically just takes their total assets divided by their total long-term liabilities or total liabilities to get a current ratio. You want that current ratio to be higher than one. In this scenario, their total assets is larger than their total liabilities. So their current ratio is going to be solid. That means they're going to have a positive shareholders equity. That is the difference right there, 67.4 billion. So a couple of things that I was looking at in there. And I would say that the free cash flow and the debt levels for Apple is very solid. Nothing's going to change in there. And of course, the free cash flow is growing, so I'm not surprised that this number is a little bit lower than this. And I'm curious to see uh, when the software updates what these are currently sitting at. But that is an example of how I would briefly go through an earnings report. Now you can see other types of stuff, go in depth to their cash flow statements and see if they had any acquisitions. Uh, right here, it does not show their acquisitions, but in. Um, the software, I can see their acquisitions that if they were making acquisitions. So here's their acquisitions. The previous two quarters, no acquisitions, so that's beautiful. And to see that free cash flow increasing like this, pretty solid as well. But that is going to complete this video. I hope you uh, got a better understanding of how I like to read uh, earnings reports, and I hope it's uh, you benefit from it as well. And I will see you guys on the next video.